trust us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so by following your holy will, we gain eternal salvation. Amen. Well, I welcome you here on this very beautiful summer Sunday morning. Um, you know, on a day like this, there are so many places you could be, and you can really commune with God on a day like this. You can just feel the beauty of the Creator, um, but it's also not an either-or situation. It's when you can do both, you know, appreciate God in the world and appreciate God in this special sacramental way here that really defines us as people of faith. I'm um, getting ready to go on uh, vacation, and when you go on vacation with the cowboys, you kind of hunker down in a room with all the rain and the tornadoes and the hurricanes and uh, that's coming later this week, so it's just nice to see some sun before I leave. Uh, so anyway, as we gather today for the celebration of this Holy Mass, I ask you to please make a private examination of your conscience. And may we now recite the confidior together. I confess to so Almighty God, one and the Holy Trinity, who knows the inmost secrets of my heart, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great cause. In your presence, O God, I publicly express sorrow for the many sins for which I have offended you. I resolve to amend my life, to improve and sanctify it, endeavor to henceforth to serve you faithfully. All the days of my life. I ask all those who have well in the Church of Christ, the Blessed Mother Mary, the Holy Apostles, the Martyrs, and Faithful, who have lived and suffered and died for the Gospel of Jesus Christ, as well as you, my brothers and sisters, to witness my confession and pray for me to our Lord God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. May the Almighty and Merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, most gracious Mom, that with purity of heart, you may worthily fulfill this holy action, establish your reverence for the Last Supper and the death of Jesus Christ, and for our sanctification and salvation. Be present among us, Jesus, our most perfect Master, because you said that where two or three are gathered together in my name, you are among them. We also ask, Lord, that through this holy liturgy, you may experience a spiritual revival and a better understanding of your holy will, bringing us together in one great family, guided by your commandments and by love, truth, and justice. Amen. And may we say it together, let us pray to the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God invisible, revealed in triune power for all time, now, and forever. Glory to God in the Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. 
Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. I will extol you, my God and King. I will bless your name forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Because while the law was given for Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, Cleanse my heart, my lips, Almighty God. You cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal. In your mercy, cleanse me so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory be to you. And at that time Jesus said in reply, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to children. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal it. Come to me, all you who labor and who are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. You will find rest for yourselves, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. this. 
On the song sheet, I included a clip art picture of Jesus removing a burden from a very grateful young man. And I didn't include another one because while I appreciated it, I wasn't sure what your reactions would be. And it's a simple drawing. And I've got it right here. And I'm keeping it so that there's no evidence in case it doesn't go over well. But there's a man <laughs> leisurely walking along. His hands are folded behind his back. He's completely relaxed. He's unencumbered. Next to him is God. And God looks just like the man, except he has a halo around his head. So this isn't really the all-powerful, almighty God. It's a, it's a very human God. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference except for the halo around his head. So next to him is God walking. And God is dragging along multiple suitcases, multiple trunks. And his back is loaded high with still more luggage. And the man walking along the leash, the man with his arms folded, you know, just casually behind his back, he looks over to God and he asks, or maybe he even accuses. And he says to, to God, so God, why do you come with so much baggage? Now I guess that could mean all the stuff that we add on to God. Maybe this guy just wants God and not all the God rules. Maybe he wants God just out there in the sunshine and the beautiful uh, summer day, and he doesn't want to have to sit on a hard wooden pew instead. And so we load all this baggage onto God, he says. So, so God, why do you come with so much baggage? And this is why I decided that I shouldn't reprint the cartoon, because God replies, this is your, and then there's this ugly ink lot. And you know what an ugly ink lot the cartoon means. <laughs> so this is your ugly ink lot baggage, not mine. So God can get away with angry ink lot exclamations but it really wouldn't look all that nice in a Sunday morning song sheet. You know, it's wonderful that we can unburden ourselves in God. And it's wonderful that we have a Savior like Jesus who encourages us to do so. It's not like God, you know, it resents the fact that we can give him our burdens. God encourages us to lay our burdens on him. And we all have burdens. Every single one of us. There are so many things in life that just drag us down so that we hardly ever get to look up because we've got so many burdens in our back all we've punched over. God is willing to take those burdens from us. And so we should be like that man on the song sheet, not the sheet that I have, but the song sheet, who says thank you to Jesus when he removes the burden. And that's one of the reasons why it's so important for us to be here this morning on a beautiful summer Sunday day where you could be doing so many other things. You decided to come to church. That means that you've got a communion relationship with Jesus. This communion, but also the communion as in friends. That Jesus, who is a person, that Jesus, who is like that God with just the halo that looks so much like us, we have a relationship with him. We're not afraid of God. We have a relationship with him, and we want to be here with him because God is a part of our lives. And I don't imagine God is sitting in heaven waiting to be praised all day, every day, but I sure can appreciate the idea that God appreciates our thanksgiving just once in a while to say thank you for all that he does. So I see that cartoon that I didn't share with you of God carrying that multiple bags and bundles. It reminds me that our God is willing to do for us so many things, but so often we are blind to all of his offers that we just will not take that baggage off of our backs and let God help us to carry it. You know, I've only seen bits and pieces of the movie Bruce Almighty. Last night I'm flipping through stations and I actually ran across it, but it just doesn't interest me that much to stay with the whole movie that long. So I don't even know how Bruce Almighty ends, but it was on last night. The premise is, watch out what you ask for when you start to think that you can play God better than God. All of those prayers that we offer, all of those conflicts that are out there, all those impossibilities, they never stop coming into God's ears. And since they can't all be answered, Last night, you know, I'm praying for the Red Sox, or yesterday afternoon, I'm praying for the Red Sox to win. There's all kinds of people down in St. Peter praying for the Tampa Bay Rays to win. You know, what's God going to do? We can't have both teams win. But that's just a simple example. But think about the serious thing. Think about when people, nations go to war, and people gather in their churches in one country and another country, and they're all playing that let us win God. What does God do? And so in that movie, Bruce Almighty, you can just see all the conflicts when there are so many things that so many people want. How does God do it? So when we ask God for all of those different things, just remember that there are other people 
asking God for all those different things as well. And when they all can't be answered, and there's also that anger at God, there's that questioning, where are you, God? And God takes us all upon his proverbial shoulders, and we should never, ever take such a God for granted. We should always say thank you that this is part of our God, that we can take our burdens and give them to him. And this compassion is the nature of our God, and Jesus makes this absolutely clear in how he led his life. And then when he says, come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. And he means it. We're middle-class white people in the greatest nation in the world. You know, our problems for other people are nothing. But you know how much our problems can weigh us down. Can you imagine all of the different problems in the world? And Jesus says, I can help you with all of them. I wish more of us would actually believe that. Turn things over to God. There's so much bad news that we have to hear about constantly, but one that shocked me recently just took place in Pennsylvania. I think it's because we've all been in similar situations. Maybe we can relate to the frustration and maybe even the anger. There was road work going on down there. Two lanes had to merge into one. And if you've ever been heading up on 91, I think it's south, and maybe, I don't know if they're going to be doing north eventually, but, you know, when that two lanes has to get into one, you know, when they're repaving, that can get annoying real fast, and you can get angry real fast. So down in Pennsylvania, this guy is going through a similar situation. He's in a pickup truck, and there's an 18-year-old girl who this week would have been going off to college orientation in the car, and then that process of trying to get, you know, into that one lane from two, intentions are high, but this guy has got a gun. He gets so mad that he pulls up beside this young girl and he shoots her in the head. He was trying to save a few seconds by getting in front of her and instead, he's gonna spend the rest of his life in jail. What's going on with that front part of our brain right here that is supposed to be thinking long term? Is there something in the food? Is there something in the water that's eating away at it? What's the matter with people? You know, guns are becoming more and more prevalent in our society, and people are getting used to them, and I'm wondering if they're starting to forget that guns actually kill people. What was this man's burden that day that made him so crazy angry that he thought that one car length would work, maybe not trying to kill a person, but when you shoot into a car in the passenger, out by the driver's seat, you sure know you're at least going to really severely injure somebody. What was it that drove that man to pull that trigger? Because I'm assuming that this is not some psychopath criminal. I'm thinking this is an ordinary guy that just went crazy. What happens to a person? Are we growing nuts or are people just growing overwhelmed? How much baggage was he carrying that made a frustrating situation turn into a deadly one? Now I hope none of us here or around us or any of our friends and our neighbors are ever so burdened with that kind of rage that this would be possible. Hopefully this remains the story that we only hear about somewhere else, or maybe even better, never again. But who knows where that line is between all of those agitated, angry people that we see around us and then turning into actual violence. I was actually talking to a Christian this past Friday who told me about waiting at a drive-up window at a CVS for a real long time because the person at the window was screaming and yelling incessantly, constantly at the tech because the tech had orders that they could not give the prescription to that person directly, that they had to give to someone else for her because she could not take them properly. And she's screaming and yelling. The guy behind her toots the horn. She gets out of the car, gives the guy the finger, starts yelling at that guy. How do you know the difference between somebody just going crazy with words, somebody reaching into the car and pulling out a weapon? We don't know anymore when that's going to happen. And it's scary. But even in the less extreme cases where violence will not erupt out of nowhere, when any of us is carrying all of that extra baggage, whatever it may be, whether it be health, whether it be social, whether it be religious, whether it be whatever it could possibly be, because there are so many things, job, the future, the indecision, the, the, the confusion about what's going to happen tomorrow, I hope we'll all remember Jesus' words of promise and we can pass some of it off onto him. I've heard from members of AA downstairs every Saturday. I've heard patients in the hospital, our own, and when I'm a chaplain, going there and meeting complete strangers that tell me what a real difference it makes when we can pass along our concerns and our cares and our complaints to Jesus. And I know this for myself as well. 
that some things you just cannot change, that you have to deal with, and you can pass off a lot of that concern and just say, Jesus, I trust you. When we are free of those burdens that we can't do anything about anyway, then we are free to work on the things that we really can fix. And that can turn a bad situation around. It can be the first step actually in healing. So Jesus is always there waiting to help. We just need to ask, and he will take some of our burdens. So may we discover the rest that comes from really believing in Jesus, really entrusting in Jesus. And for these things we pray in his name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty Lord, as we gather before your altar on this summer Sunday morning, we offer our prayers for Carolyn Page on the one year anniversary of her death, is offered by Linda and Walter Mahalski. We offer our prayers in memory of Ann J. Dudek, the father of Father Paul Dudek, uh, who passed away yesterday. May he rest in peace and may your presence help his family in their time of mourning. We offer our prayers for Richard Slavenweit, um, who is undergoing chemotherapy. It's offered by Marianna Foster. We offer prayers for Liz Bridgman, battling cancer, raising three young girls on her own. Alice, a young girl with lymphoma Hodgkin's disease. And Alicia, a young mother of three with stage four breast cancer, is all offered by Cindy Bench. We offer our prayers for Frank Skrosky, is offered by his brother Don, the Skrosky Gates and Kirk and Dahl families. We also offer our prayers for Meg Connors, is offered by Ellen and Don Trust. And finally, we offer our prayers for two-year-old Jack Soleil, is offered by Marianna Foster. Are there any other prayers that you would like to offer at this time, Teresa? Yes, my sister-in-law's granddaughter, Amanda, was hit by a dump truck on Friday. Oh. She's in intensive care, but she's made some progress. So thank God for the progress. Absolutely. So Amanda, who's uh, in intensive care after an accident. Absolutely. Anything else? For all of these prayers, Lord, plus the ones that we keep in the privacy of our thoughts and still bring to you, we ask the Lord to bless each and every one of us here gathered, and to also bless all those who are perish who are unable to be with us here today, and those who are perish who have chosen not to be with us here today. And for these things together, Lord, we pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive us our trespasses. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in thee. May the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal it. Jesus 
pray that you son and I. Most help me seek you to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy, unspotted sacrifices, which your holy church receives from you, and point you to defend and guide throughout the world, together with your priests and all true believers in the holy faith. Remember, Lord, your servant.
faith that they will become for our souls a saving remedy. We humbly ask, O Almighty God, to command that our offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your highest altar into the presence of your divine majesty. That we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from the salt may be filled with every blessing and grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who have passed on to eternity.
by your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be caused by judgment. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy love. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, self fulfill your holy will. May the last night be entirely with you, my Lord and my God. Grant this who lives, reigns with God the Father, in unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The Lord, I am not willing to be healed, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Come, children, listen to me, and I will teach you the reverence of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And also be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, may we who have been made one with your Son, through your holy word, and through this holy Eucharist, proclaim with our lives what we profess with our lips. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered in the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and all of those for whom I have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in darkness, the darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all may believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willingness, but by God. And the word became flesh. And made his dwelling among us, we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. 